Hello, I'm Margaret Bishop, and I'm going to be leading a training on the basics of using Blackboard, whether you're in a face-to-face -face class, a remote teaching situation, or you're teaching entirely online. In this training, I'll be covering several things, how to enter Blackboard, how to navigate the landing page, navigating Blackboard courses, communicating with your students, uploading content and creating and grading assignments, and then I'll give you a link for additional resources. Please keep in mind that this training is on the basics of Blackboard. As you become comfortable with these, or if you're already comfortable with them, you may want to follow several other trainings specific on using the Grade Center, on using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra for interactive sessions, and so forth. This training session just covers the basics. So the first thing to know is that Blackboard currently works best with the Google Chrome browser. It's the one that you see in the middle of those three icons at the top of the screen. You see um, Safari, you see Firefox, then Google Chrome, then Safari. Any of those three work, but currently Google Chrome seems to work the best of the three. If you don't see Google Chrome on the bottom of your computer screen, you might want to go into Applications, and when you open the Applications menu, scroll down until you see Google Chrome. So look in the G's for Google Chrome, not in the C's for just Chrome. When you open the internet in that URL bar, type in fitnyc.open.suny.edu. It is not case sensitive. I just put open and SUNY in uppercase to just make them a little bit easier to see. Type fitnyc.open.suny.edu, click on it, click and or hit enter or return, and that should open the Blackboard landing page for you. So you'll note on the landing page in the upper left hand corner, you will see a couple of things. You'll see this tab, it's like the tab on an old fashioned file folder. And it says, My Institution Blackboard. To the right of that, you'll see this plus sign. If you want to be able to open your email at the same time, click on this plus. That will open a separate internet page, and you can open your email and so forth. Or maybe you want to go to another website because you want to be able to copy a web link and so forth. But you just do it by clicking on that plus, that'll open another site to get back to the Blackboard page. Just click up here on this tab. You'll notice then that you see FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology. Right below that, you'll see the photo of 27th Street at FIT's campus with that yellow New York City taxi cab there. Uh, You'll see over here on the right my announcements, and I currently don't have any announcements on that uh, that are showing right now. You'll see some other things here, including the login area. Note that your, your landing page might look a little bit different. Some of the position of some of these things may, a little, may be a little bit different, but uh, this upper left portion should still be the same. So then this area down here, I want to expand it a little or enlarge it so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, up here, it says need help. You've got the Blackboard help desk telephone number. It is available to both faculty and students. They'll ask what university you're at or what campus you're at, whether you're faculty or students, and then they'll direct you either to the faculty help desk or the student help desk. It's been open seven days a week, not quite 24-7, but pretty extensive hours. If your students are having difficulty with Blackboard, rather than trying to tell them how to use Blackboard yourself, just direct them to the help desk and let the help de desk experts uh, answer their questions for you. Alternatively, you can also email open.com 
I'm sorry, open SUNY help at suny.edu. And then you have a variety of other uh, resources available to you to help you with using Blackboard, teaching online, and so forth. So to log into your Blackboard course shells, you need to go to the login area. It says login here. You use your regular FIT username. Mine is Margaret underscore Bishop. It's just your first name underscore last name. Uh, and I type in my regular FIT password. So it's not my email address. It's not Margaret underscore Bishop at FITNYC.edu. The username is just the Margaret underscore Bishop. And then my password, and then click login. That will take you to your individual landing page for Blackboard. One of the things that you should see is you should see all of your courses listed here. If you've taught in the past, um, anytime in the past few years, you, should, you may see your old courses listed here. Um, and certainly, you should see any courses that you've been assigned to teach for the upcoming semester. So another thing to be familiar with on the landing page is you're probably going to have to scroll down and back up. You can do it by clicking anywhere here on this landing page and using your up down arrows on your keyboard, or you can click on this gray slider bar and literally drag it up and down. Uh, that allows you to navigate down and back up on the page. Now, another thing to be aware of is in your courses, they are only available to students or only visible to students once you have made them available. So if you look at my list of courses here on the right, you'll see this first one actually says not currently available after the course number and name and semester. These two down here, however, are available. And it doesn't say not currently available. That's how you know the difference. When your course says not currently available, but you need to make it available, scroll down on that landing page to where you see quickly course availability. The green toggle switches that say on indicate that those courses are currently available to the students. The brown toggle switches that say off are currently not visible to students. You as the faculty member can get into those courses. The students cannot. To change the availability, it's very easy. You click on the gray circle in that toggle switch. If you have clicked on the gray circle next to off, it will turn green and say on. If you have one that's currently visible and you want to hide it, you click on the gray circle, it will change to off and then show not currently available. Another thing to be familiar with on Blackboard on your once you're in your course is this toolbar on the left is very, very helpful to you. This is where you're going to start most of the activities you want to do. You'll see your course and section number. Each course has its own section. So if I have two sections of TT202, each one has its own course shell and Blackboard. A good thing to do if you have two sections of the same course, get one entirely set up for the new semester, and then you can actually copy it into the other section rather than doing a little bit in one and a little bit in another. Then I see some of the different things I can do. It has announcements, home page, content, discussions, etc. And this area down here, um, course management, is where I'll find things like the Grade Center and so forth. But when you want to communicate with students, you want to post content, create discussions or tests, record attendance, etc., you always start on this left sidebar. One of the first things that we're going to have to do with students in Blackboard in a given course is to communicate 
to them. There are two really easy ways to do it from Blackboard. One is by announcements, one is by email. We find both of them here on the left sidebar. We can post an announcement that is visible as soon as the course is visible and is visible throughout the duration of the course. We can post an announcement and limit the visibility to a specific period of time. We can post an announcement and direct Blackboard to send a copy of it immediately to students as an email. It's a little bit of a, an extra uh, measure that if they don't see it in one place, maybe they'll see it in the other place. And we can email individual students, a group of students, or the entire class. Now, something to know about emailing from Blackboard, it will go to the student's official FIT email address. If they choose to respond to you, their response will come to your FIT email address. Email within Blackboard is only outgoing. There is no place, there's no reservoir for incoming email. All of the incoming email comes to our regular FIT email. So let's set up an announcement. You might want to do this even before your course starts. Uh, I will sometimes remind my students a few weeks before the semester starts that they need to buy their textbook or they need to buy a swatch kit or uh, maybe in your classes they need certain design tools or something else. Uh, you can put up an announcement, have it sent as an email so that they know ahead of time that they need to get these things in preparation for the first day of class. So to set up an, an announcement, go to announcements on the left sidebar, click on that, it will bring up a page that looks like this. You can see I already have an announcement posted in my screenshot. Uh, to create a new one, I click Create Announcement. It will bring up a new page. Anywhere you see this orange asterisk in Blackboard, you have to input information. So it's asking for the subject. I always start my announcements with the course number, TT202, space, hyphen, space, and then a name for announcement. Then you type in the content. If you want to do any formatting, you want to boldface certain words or dates, you want to italicize something, you want to use bullet points, whatever, you do it using these three formatting bars. And then you, you scroll down a bit further. You can choose to not date restrict the announcement, which means it will be available as soon or visible as soon as you click submit. It will stay visible throughout the duration of the semester. Or you can choose to date restrict, in which case you select to display after and display until date and time. To select the date, you click on the little box, uh, pop-up calendar, you click on the date, click apply, and then you can set the time using the little box with the circle in it that's actually a little list of times. You'll see it starts at midnight. You may want to start, uh, initiate the visibility at 5 p.m. maybe. Just click on one of these, use your, your down arrow key on your keyboard and it'll allow you to Scroll down until you get five to 5 p.m. Click on that. Uh, then you would go ahead and click Submit. If you choose to send a copy of the announcement immediately, then you need to select Not Date Restricted. And then you also click on the little circle to the left of Send a Copy of the Announcement Immediately. Click Submit. Blackboard will send that immediately as an email to everyone who is registered in the course. 
Now, another way to communicate with students is via email. And you may say, well, I can just go into my FIT email and type in the names and addresses. You can, and it's very easy to make mistakes or to overlook a student in doing so. It's a lot easier to do it within Blackboard um, for an individual course. So you click on email, you get this page that shows up. You have options of sending to all users in the course, uh, all student users, the difference being if there is another faculty member or maybe your department chair or an observer or something in your Blackboard course shell, they be included in all users. Uh, if you are listed as a preview user, you'll get a copy of that email if you select all users. Um, all student users is only the students. Single or select users allows you to choose one student or a few students. Uh, and single or select groups allows you if you have already created groups, maybe for a group project and you've set up those groups in Blackboard, then you can just individual one group rather than having to select all the students in that group. So for my example, I've used single or select users. Normally you would see all the students listed here and you're going to have to click on one, scroll down to see all, all of the students in the course. For privacy reasons, I have covered up the students names except for myself. I'm listed as a preview user in my course. I've already clicked on it. It's highlighted at blue. To send this email to myself, I click on the little chevron pointing to the right. It will move my name here to selected. If I realize I selected the wrong name, I click on that name. I use the other uh, arrow pointing to the left and it'll put the name back in available to select. I give it a subject, I type in my content, I do any formatting, and then I scroll down and click submit. Now another thing that's very important to do is to upload content. So we may want to upload instructions to a product or some images we want, to, want our students to review. We might want to upload a PowerPoint or an Excel spreadsheet or a web link to a video we want them to watch. I encourage you to think first about organizing the content that you upload in folders, just as if you had one of those old fashioned file drawers and you had folders that you put you separated content by subject matter or action that's needed or some other criteria, I encourage you to think about doing that in the content area as well. If a student opens their content error page and see a list of 25 things, that's going to appear very intimidating to them. It's also going to take them a lot longer to scroll down and find what it is that they need to find to do whatever you want them to do. So think first about organizing your content in folders. When you're ready to load content, go to this left sidebar again, click on content. If you want to create a folder, then click on build content. You'll see Build Content Assessments Tools. Click on Build Content. You'll get this drop down menu. Click Content Folder. You'll get a new page. Here you've got that orange asterisk to the left of Name. So you give that folder a name. If you want to make it stand out a little bit more, you can change the color from black to some other color font. Click on the little chevron to the right of black. You'll get a drop down menu with several different colors. You click on the one you want, click apply, and it will change the color of the font for the name of the folder. You type in anything that description maybe that you want to put in here. If you want to format it, you use the formatting tools. Now, the next part is really important. Scroll down into standard options and it says permit users to view this content, yes or no. If you have not clicked 
yes, the students will never be able to see the folder. If you want to limit when they can see it, still select yes for permit users to view content and limit it using the display after and display until calendars and times. Track number of views, I always select yes. That way Blackboard collects data for each student on how many times they have entered and when they have entered a folder or opened a particular content item. And if a student comes to you and says, well, I opened the folder, but I couldn't find the assignment instructions that you said were there, and checked and you make sure that everything is correct and other students are able to do it and this student insists that the content's not there, you can call the Blackboard Help Desk. They can tell you whether the student actually opened that folder or not. But if you have kept the default no, Blackboard cannot go back and recreate that data. So once you've selected all the options you want here, go to the lower right and click Submit. That will create a folder. You'll see here on my content page, I have two folders. One is bright gold. That one is available. You can see the title of my folder. See another one that's light gray. That one is light gray because it is not visible to the students. And it says availability item is hidden from students. It was last available on May 18, 2020. So, you can get into both of the folders as the faculty member. The students will only be able to see this one that's available. They will not be able to see that one. Uh, then you'll scroll, you'll see down here I have it, another type of content. I have a file, it happens to be a PDF of FIT's box calendar. Don't worry about this little red dial if you see it. That just indicates that that particular file does not meet all of the standards for accessibility for uh, students with disabilities. Then you'll see another type of icon down here that happens to be a web link. Looks like a file, but it's got that little globe there. These two are both available. If you just saw a shadow of them, like the shadow of this folder, those that would tell you right away that they are not visible to the students. So the most common type of content that many of us uh, want to upload are files, whether it's a PDF, a PowerPoint, a Word document, an Excel document, or an image of some type. So to do so, go to the left sidebar, click Content, select or click on Build Content, and that will give you a drop down menu. You select File, click on File, and it will take you to a new page. There you assign a name. It's got that orange ask, so you have to give it a name. Uh, you have to attach the file. So click on Browse My Computer. Either have that file already on your desktop or on a USB drive. Browse your computer, find it, click on the name, and click open, and that will upload it to the content section. File options open in a new window. That just means it will open a new page within Blackboard when the student clicks on that. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Add alignment to content. I leave the default of no. This next part is very important though. Standard options permit users to view this content. Again, if you have not selected yes, they will not be able to see it. Track number of views. Again, I always select yes. Select date and time restrictions. Display after display until. You use that little calendar and the clock to set the days and times. And then you go down to the lower right and you click submit. Now, in many cases, we want to be able to uh, show our students videos or have them access a video with them to watch. 
rather than trying to upload the whole video, what I choose to do is to find it on the web, copy the web link, and upload the web link, allow them to click on it, and go straight to that video. It's a much simpler process. Again, you go into content on the left sidebar, build content, web link, you give it a name, you copy paste the URL from the web in here, you put in any instructions you want, do any formatting, you set the availability, and you click submit. So now another thing that's very important for us to do in Blackboard is to enable students to submit assignments, homework assignments, projects, and so forth. And instructors have sometimes said to me, well, I, I'll just have my students email their assignments to me. You can do that. It is a nightmare when you start receiving 20 or 30 or maybe 50 or 60 different assignments if you have a couple of sections. Some of them get diverted into your junk mail. Um, a student might email the wrong file and then email you a second time. Um, they are then going to email you and ask you if you got it and so forth. It becomes a nightmare for you to make sure that you don't overlook any student's assignments. It's much better and much easier for you to do it within Blackboard. It allows you to then black to grade those assignments within Blackboard as well. So to create an assignment with a Dropbox and give instructions to the students, click Content. This time, click Assessments. That's for gradable items such as assignments and tests. It'll take you to a drop-down menu select assignment, click on assignments. It will bring you to a new page that says create assignment. You type in the name, you can change the color if you want it to the name of the assignment to stand out. You type in any instructions. If you want to attach a file, you can do it here. There's a paper clip. You click on that, you upload, browse your computer and upload the, I'm sorry, here. Browse your computer and upload the file. You can set a due date, and I encourage you to do that. That alerts the student as to when it is due, and it puts that due date in their Blackboard calendar to serve as a reminder. So you click on that box, click the little calendar to select the date, click the little clock to select the time, continue to scroll down. You are required to assign possible points. That is the maximum that the student can earn for that assignment. I encourage instructors to make each gradable item worth 100 points and use a weighted total to calculate the semester grade and assign relative importance to a quiz versus a test, a homework assignment versus a midterm exam, and so forth particularly if we're in a situation where we might have to go from teaching face-to-face -to, -face to teaching remote during a semester. It's much easier to make those changes if every individual gradable item is worth 100 points and then we just uh, change the weighted totals if we have to add an assignment or drop a project or something like that. Then, Scroll down here to make the assignment available to availability. Always make sure you have checked make the assignment available. Then you have display after display until dates if you want to limit when they have access to this assignment and Dropbox and track number of views. But don't click submit yet because we have to deal with two of these three areas here submission details, grading options, and display of grades. The middle one, 
Grading options does not apply to us at FIT, so we don't have to do anything with that, but we do have to treat the first one and the third one. Click on Submission Details. It will expand, and you'll see all of this. If you have set up groups within Blackboard, you'll have your Blackboard course. You'll have the option of checking group submission. Otherwise, the default will be individual submission that each student submits individually, and you grade them individually. Number of attempts. If you click on Single Attempt, it will give you these three options. I encourage you to select unlimited attempts. Invariably, one student or another will upload the wrong file. Or if you have multiple parts to an assignment, they'll do it as separate files, upload one. If you've said single attempt, they will not be able to upload the second one. If you select unlimited attempts and then select use highest grade, when you get that pop-up menu, Blackboard will allow the students multiple unlimited, either multiple or unlimited attempts, whichever you choose, to submit that file. It will save them making, submitting the wrong one, emailing you saying, dear professor, I submitted the wrong file, it won't let me submit the right one now, and you have to change it, and then you have to email them back and say, okay, now you can try it again, and so forth. It'll do a lot of headaches, so just select unlimited attempts. Plagiarism tools. I have not used those in my courses. They're not particularly relevant for the courses I teach. However, if they are for your, yours, you can check the box before check submissions for plagiarism using Safe Assign. Um, then scroll down to Display of Grades. Click on that. It will open this box. You can elect to display grades to your students as a score, a letter, text, percentage, complete, incomplete, or I actually put in a custom uh, letter grading scale and labeled it as such. Including Grade Center calculations. Uh, I would click, I would select this unless this item is going to be a practice quiz or a practice assignment to which you'd want to assign a grade. If that's the case, you still have to put in the number of points theoretically possible, but when you leave this box unchecked, it will not actually count any points. You can grade it. Uh, and let the students have the feedback, but it will not show, it will not include it in your final grade calculation. And then show to students in my grades. Uh, I like to show my students' grades to them as quickly as possible. However, if I'm grading a project where it's going to take me maybe three days to grade all the students' submissions, I like to grade all of them before I start displaying any grades, in which case I would not check this box, and I would go back later and make the grades visible to students once I have finished all of them. Um, show average and median statistics. I never show those to my students. I don't want my students to aim to just be above average. I want them to aim to do the best that they can. And then you would scroll down to the bottom right and click Submit. So now you want to know uh, how to grade your assignments. Where do you grade your assignments? Where do you even see the assignments the students have submitted? Back to this left sidebar where it says Grade Center. Click on Grade Center. It will expand. You'll see Needs Grading, Full Grade Center, Assignments, and Tests. It'll look like this. You can, you've got two different options for grading. You can look at only those assignments that have been submitted but you have not yet graded, or you can look at your entire Grade Center with all the assignments, all the students, everything that's been graded or not graded. 
sometimes used to just go to needs grading. Sometimes I want to go to full grade center to see who has not yet submitted something. So to use needs grading, you would go ahead and, and click here after clicking grade center, you would click on needs grading. It will take you to another page. It might say under the category and item name and student's name and so forth, that might say zero items to be graded. That means either you've graded everything that's been submitted or nothing has yet been submitted. In my case, in this course, I happen to use tests. I happen to set up homework assignments as tests, but I use short answer questions, so I have to grade them manually. You'll see that it says grade all users three, and yet there are four submissions here. That's because three of them are for chapter six, and then I have one that is for chapter five, so that gets treated separately. I select grade all years. That will take me to the first of these three submissions. It will allow me to grade that student, provide any feedback I want to provide to the student, and click Submit. Then it will take me immediately to the second submission. I do the same thing. It will take me to the third submission. And then it will allow me to go back to the full grade center. Alternatively, I can click on Grade Center and then Full Grade Center. That will show me the student's last and first names. I've hidden them here for privacy. Uh, you'll see the last date that each individual student accessed this Blackboard course shell. You'll see the grade that student received for Chapter 1, the grade for Chapter 2. This chapter, only one student has submitted so far. There are no submissions here or here. This gold disc with a white exclamation point indicates that that student submission needs to be graded. I click on this gray circle with the white on. It will take me to that student submission, and it will allow me to view the submission, write feedback, grade it. So here I've clicked on that chevron. It gives me this drop-down menu. I can either view the grade details as I have here, or I can just go straight to grading the attempt. I've hidden the student's name. I have the name of the assignment here. I can click on view attempt and just or attempts and see each of the attempts that the student has made if they've made more than one. It lists the attempts here. I can click on grade attempt and just grade that one attempt. It will show me that submission, allow me to grade it, allow me to give any feedback. It will then allow me, if I want, to go on to the next submission, or I can simply submit that grade and return to the grade center. It will allow me also to exempt a grade. Um, sometimes I'll have um, just a very simple assignment due the first for the very first week of class. Maybe a student adds late, and it's not so important that the student do that assignment. I might exempt the student in that case. So those are the basics of using Blackboard. Once you've mastered these and you want to set up discussions or you want to set up your grade center or create a test or set up an interactive session using Blackboard Collaborate, we have lots of different opportunities for you to get training on how to do all those items and even more. Go to this website here. Uh, that's where the online learning people at FIT and Center for Excellence in Teaching have populated it with videos, with PowerPoints, and so forth, giving you lots of resources on how to do more sophisticated, more complex uh, activities within Blackboard. In addition, you can reach out to Jeffrey Ryman 
and Jose Diaz for one-on-one -on -one consultations or one-on-one -on -one assistance. You can call the Blackboard, the SUNY Blackboard Help Desk that I talked about at the beginning of this training. And you can email me to schedule one-on-one -on -one phone consults where I can walk you through how to do basic things in Blackboard. So I think once you begin using Blackboard, you'll find that it is your new best friend and you'll wonder why you haven't been using it more in the past. Whether you're teaching face-to-face, -face, you're teaching remotely, or you're teaching online. So thank you very much.